I use Visual Studio Code every day, and it's one of the biggest productivity tools in my arsenal, thanks to its incredible built-in features. Over the years, I've expanded Visual Studio Code's potential with a set of tools and tips that I found really useful for day-to-day -day tasks. So in this video, I would like to share with some of them with you. The first tip I want to give you is the, a tool called Better Merge. Better Merge is an extension for Visual Studio Code that allows you to quickly see the merge conflicts that you may have when you merge code from branch to branch. So the extension does this. Let's say I have a branch in my branch and I modify a file. Here I modify this index.js and then in my original branch, my master branch, I also modify this file at the same line. So when, when this happens, you will essentially have a merge conflict for your, uh, for your branches. So let's see what happens. If I try to merge in the changes from master, which is, has the same line change as my current branch, it creates a merge conflict. So if I go into the code right now, As you can see that it highlights the branch, the, the, the line that are changed on both branches. So instead of the old usual way where you fix the merge conflict manually in the code, I'm going to do it right here, except this time I can click on these buttons here. So you can either accept the current change, which is on your branch, or you can accept the incoming branch, which is on the master branch, or you can accept both changes and have both lines appear in your code. So in this case, I want my change to take over the master branches change. So I'm just going to do a sub current change and that's merge conflict is resolved. So I'm going to do the same here and there you go. Merge conflict is resolved. So this extension is very useful and it gives you a visual uh, look at what the change was. And I can, you can get the extension at the Visual Studio Code Marketplace and it's called Better Merge. The second tip I want to give you is a Visual Studio Code supports full emit snippets. So emit snippet is a way where you can type HTML very fast by using a shortcut. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I want a on-order list of four items. So all I had to do is do ul, I need on-order list. If I want to give the class to the on-order list, I can do my list. This means I want to give, I want to create a onward list with a class called my list, and I want four items in there. So when I, as soon as I press tab, you see how Visual Studio Code automatically inserts this whole thing in there. So what's cool about this is that I can do even more with it. So if I do the same thing, my list. Now if I do lorem, and then do the same thing, item times four. This will add the Lorem Ipsum placeholder to all my uh, item lists. And if this Lorem is too long, you can even do Lorem give me 10 characters. And then when you press tab at the end, and it gives you 10, sorry, 10, 10 words. And there you go. So this is very handy if you want to type your HTML much quicker. I have a link to default emit cheat sheet, so you can look up what are the common things that you can use uh, as a shortcut to create fast HTML. Now, the other thing I really like about Visual Studio Code, the, the third thing is that, let's say you have a, a JavaScript file. So let's say I create a JavaScript file. Now it has auto JS stock generation. What this means is that if I create a function, my func, and then it accepts a name and age as parameter and returns greetings. So if I do this, have a function in my code, I can automatically add documentation JS doc style by doing slash star star and press enter. Now it will auto fill out all the, the parameters I have for this function based on looking at this signature. So now you can easily add your documentation to your code. And then if you have a docu doc generator program, you could generate a documentation for all your functions. So this is very useful. The fourth thing I'd like to show you, it's a thing called count auto council log. 
So let's say I have a variable. Now, I usually when you're debugging, you want to log your value of this thing. You can just do, so I, all I can do is copy this thing and then hold down, press Command K and it automatically puts this variable in here with a string here and then the value. It logs it out very fast. So I'll never have to type console log again. The extension I use for this is called console wrapper. So by using console wrapper, I can quickly console log any variable as you know very easily. So command K is my shortcut, but if you want your own, you can definitely write your own. So I have this setting here, which will allow me to do command K on the console log. Now the fifth feature I really like about Visual Studio Code is that you're able to do instant markdown preview. So let's say I have a markdown file somewhere. By using the instant markdown extension, as soon as I open a markdown file, it will automatically open that file in a browser. So if I click on this, you see my browser automatically in opens and it gives me a preview of exactly what this markdown file looks like. Now if you don't want this this extension, you can also do it uh, natively that comes with Visual Studio Code. So all you have to do is open a, a markdown file. What I usually do is I like to split it to two panels. And then in this panel, I can press Command Shift V and it instantly previews my readme file. So as I drag up and down, you can see it's doing that preview. It's dragging, I mean, it's navigating to the position that I want. So let's say I want to add new things to it. You see, it instantly previews my changes. Pretty cool, huh? So you can never write bad markups, markdowns again with this feature. So the next feature I'd like to go over, it's called go to file from source. So this feature is pretty nice in that, so all the time when you write JavaScript or any language, you might want to import uh, source code from various areas of your, um, your code repository. So let's say I want to, here's a re Redux application that imports car action from this location. So if I want to know where if I want to go directly to this file, I don't have to navigate through here to go to my file. All I can do is hold down the command key and then it becomes clickable. I don't even have to click it actually. It shows me a preview of exactly what the function definition looks like for this file. So I can do the same for anything. Even the modules from no modules folder, you could do it too. So you can quickly see how fast you can, how much time you can save yourself by doing this and it quickly tells you where the code is. So if you click it, it actually takes you there. So this feature is really nice. You can quickly navigate around. Now the other, the next feature I want to talk about is multi-select. Now if you come from an editor like Sublime or Atom, you probably know this feature. So let's say I have this big piece of uh, JSON output and I want to multi-select you know, quickly edit multiple areas. So I can just do something like this. I just highlight one area and then hold down Command D and it will quickly select all the occurrences of this thing. So I can quickly, you know, make changes. Or I can even use it to, to format this file. So let's say I want to highlight all of this. Now just do this and quickly, you see, you can edit and format things very quickly. The next feature I really like, it's called Zen Mode. So sometimes you get a lot of windows open and you get distracted while you're coding. So this feature is really nice for you in that you can uh, filter out all distraction from the site. So to get into Zen Mode, you can do Command Shift P and then type in Zen and press Enter. Now this will make this full screen and you can now focus on what you want to do and nothing else will distract you. To go back, you just command shift P and Zen and press enter. The next feature I want to go over is quick navigation. Now you can do command, hold down command and then press P and this thing will open. Now you just type in any file name and it will find a match for you and you can quickly go to that file very quickly and painlessly. You don't never have to navigate any file again. 
So this feature, this is very, very fast and you can do pretty much anything you want. It will search for your whole source code directory for any file that matches whatever you typed in. Now, if you want to go to a specific line after you find a file, it's also very easy. So if I want to go to this file, I can just do command P and then do a column and then it goes to whatever the line you want to type. So right now it detects that there's 106 lines in here. I can just do 28 and it goes directly to line 28 for me and highlights it for me here. So this is very handy if you have a big file and you want to go to specific line very quickly. The other feature that makes this a really nice way of navigation getting your code file is this code map here. This code map here is a new feature from Visual Studio Code. For a long time they didn't have this but they just added recently. So it's disabled by default so if you want to turn it on you have to go to preferences, go to settings and then you have to put this setting here editor.minimap.enable to equal to true and then it will quickly instantly see this appear. So you can use this to navigate around your source code and get a view. So it's very nice and good for you. The last feature that I really really am impressed and definitely sped up my productivity is called snippets. Visual Studio Code allows you to add your own snippets to your to the code so if you let's say I have an HTML file so look what happens when I type in HTML so it creates a predefined set of snippets to your to your uh, to your settings so now you can pretty much for any language you can put any preset amount of uh, preset snippets so in order to make this work, you had to go to this feature is off by default, so you have to go to settings, and then you have to type in editor tab completion equals true. Now, once you have this, you can see press command shift P, and then type in snippets. So you can go to preferences, open user snippets. And then select the language that you want to write for the snippets. Right now, let's go to HTML5 to see how that that this snippet here was done. So you can define the name of the snippets, and then the prefix. This will be whatever you type in. It will complete to whatever the value of body is. So this is a simple JSON file. Sorry, uh, Java JavaScript file. So the body. The tricky part is that the body accepts an array of elements. And each line of your predefined snippets needs to be a value of an array. So as you can see, I'm putting each line as a separate uh, value inside the array. And then there's this trick here, the dollar sign two. This will be where your cursor is as soon as you as the snippet is inserted. So if you notice, when I type HTML and press tab, the snippet place my cursor at the body between the body tag and this is done via this dollar sign too so this is very useful and this is the snippet that I created custom made so in the Visual Studio Code marketplace there's a lot of these uh, snippets for different languages like PHP, JavaScript, Go, Python so this will definitely make your productivity much much faster if you ever write a lot of boilerplate code so I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on, and tips and tricks video on Visual Studio Code and how it helped me stay productive. So let me know if you have a tip of your own and I'll be welcome to listen and maybe put it on one of my videos in the future. So I'll see you next time.